Hey everyone, welcome back to another Godzilla Battleline video, and in celebration of G21 leaving, I have a deck built around him to help you get wins. Now, I have actually been using this in the arena to some success. I have about 16 win streak right now with this deck. I have lost twice, but that is not to say that this isn't good. We have a kind of more expensive deck just between a level 7 and a level 6, but we keep all the rest of our costs pretty low, so you'll see why. Basically, you can see on screen right now, I'm using Gigan's ability, Bladed Ripper, to make everyone's speeds, his speeds, Mega Gear is slow, doesn't stop it because his speed takes precedent over Mega Gear is slow, and him placing that Mega Gear is lost him that match. He tried to slow, he wasted 5 energy on it, couldn't stop it. Between G89 and G21, you're putting out an insane amount of damage, and look at that, they took down G89, but G21 is still left standing. That's the whole point of this deck, is to get G21 to the other side of the field. Not saying you can't use him against other units, but mainly you're just trying to chauffeur him all the way to the other end. So, I can't take full credit for this deck, although this is... Uh, pretty much an original creation. The inspiration of this deck, someone rinsed me in the arena using a Gigan leader with G89 and G21, but the rest of their deck was very different than this. I thought I could probably take that concept and make it a little bit better. And then the Sande in my deck was suggested by Maelstrom. I had Kamakaris uh, there instead of the uh, Sande. I switched to Sande and I was seeing more wins. But in my opinion, you don't have to have Sande and Manila. You could have one or the other and then put Kamakaris in for Manila or Kamakaris in for Sande. Either way, you're going to want that slow. I'm using two slows, and that is proven to be very effective at stalling the enemy unit. So let's get into breaking down this deck. So Gigan Leader. You don't even need a high-level Gigan Leader. Mine's 21. I'm not really investing in Gigan too much. I'm mainly using him for his ability right here, Bladed Ripper. Now, Bladed Ripper has a very long cooldown, so if you don't make this first push successful on your first go, it could really come back and bite you in the ass, and then you're going to be playing heavy defense. And I'm talking about heavy defense because this deck is so expensive, so be careful when you're using that Bladed Ripper. Next is G89. I don't think we need a real big explanation for G89. He's a, he's a hard-hitting very very big tank he is probably the best tank in the game at the moment although at the current meta he's not seeing a lot of play because of a lot of flyers so because of all the flyers are taking him down but if you can get him past the flyers you can see some success there with him and obviously g21 because he basically does unlimited damage if he can hit a target for long enough and that's why we have g89 right we have g89 to soak up the damage so that g21 can take his time and taking down a unit given six seconds g21 can take down any unit in the game, right? Just give give him some time to power up and he'll take them down. So that's what G89 is for. The combo is a bit expensive, you know, 7 plus 6, it's 13 energy, plus Gigan's Bladed Ripper is 2 more. So it is a very pricey combo. My strategy for the three of them is to save up 10 energy, drop G89 by some buildings or by some water, save up some more energy, drop G21 behind him, kind of get them going a little bit. Maybe they'll make it like, you know, halfway up my side of the field, and then I'll hit with the Bladed Ripper and send them way up. Now, setting them by themselves, you can get lucky if your opponent isn't prepared for this. It's like the very beginning of the match. You have a really solid opening hand with both of them. You can pull this off really early for a very fast game. The first match that you saw on the screen actually was one within the first like 30 seconds because I just was able to like sneak up on him with it. So it is possible, but if you're not going to, if you don't win that first engagement, odds are you're going to be backpedaling and playing defense. And that's why we have Bailante and Batra in this deck. So both of them are extremely meta units right now. Bailante is one of the best AoEs in the game. And when she's in the water, she has like 180% damage boost. This makes her the highest DPS in the game for the amount of targets she can hit. There's a lot of units right now on the ground that are being used. So we're seeing like Ultimas, other Bailantes, Heteras, Kamakaris, Manilas all over the place. They're very good for that. And she can take them down pretty easily. Now, like I said, if she's water she gets a buff next is batra batra gives you 150 percent damage boost right this applies to your leader and any units caught within the field you can see it on the screen right there bailante and the leader just got that that g89 was taken down and now they're both of them are going to take down this space godzilla so even a low level batra will still provide that buff Although it is good in this deck to have a high level Batra because this deck does not, and I repeat, does not have a lot of counters to aerial units. Like I said earlier, they're really dominant in the meta right now. 
Sure, you have Manila and Sande in G21, but G21 takes a while. Manila doesn't do too much, and Sande doesn't do too much. All you're getting from them is the slow. Batra is your main aerial counter, and so if you have the higher the Batra, obviously the better it is, but you don't need a high Batra to benefit from the buff, but you do probably need a higher up Batra to have a good counter anti-air for this deck. Now, there was a match I played where my opponent was only using anti-air, and, or, I'm sorry, only using air characters, like Ghidorah, uh, Mothra, Batra, and Mega, uh, Mega Gears. I was gonna say Mega Nulon, Mega Gears. And I was just able to send G89 straight under them, no worries, and take down their leader, no problem. So, too many air leader, or too many air units is bad, but a lot of people are running like King Ghidorah and Batra, or Super X especially, is very potent right now. So, things to keep in mind is this deck is very susceptible to anti air, and so hopefully, if you have a high enough Batra, you can uh, prevent some of these uh, stronger air units from killing you. Next is Manila and Sandai, and I touched on them briefly at the beginning of this video, but I wanted to touch back on them again. They're two energy, so they're easy to cycle out, and they're both good for slows. As you can see here, you Sandai for a little bit of chip damage. I thought it might have killed him. Uh, maybe if mine was a higher level, it, it might have, but I'm not using Sandai for damage. I'm using Sandai for the slow, and I'm using Manila for the slow. Manila has good range, and you can see on the screen, he's able to put in work against that Super X. So like I said, he's anti-air. He doesn't do too much damage, but against Super X, he is a viable counter. Uh, his range is pretty comparable to Ultima as well, which is nice. And then Sande's for the slow. You could use the Kamakuris to, like, slow down enemy units. I mostly use Kamakuris to stop Caesars or Godzilla 89s and stuff like that. But honestly, just Manila and a slow co and the Sande slow combined will pretty much stop anything dead in its tracks. Uh, I, like I said, Sande, Manila, and Kamakuris, all three of them are interchangeable. But you're going to want to use them because they're two cost. And you can have two two cost units in your deck. Which is good for this because we can cycle back to our main damage dealers, G89 or G21. If you're falling back and you're playing on defense, G89 is a really good defensive option. But he's expensive and you want to get him out quickly. So Batra fully evolved as 5 energy. Bailante fully evolved as 3 energy. Both Manila, Sande, and Kamakuris are 2 energy. So you can cycle these units out very quickly to get back to your high cost units. Caesar is my flex pick. I'm not sold on King Caesar in this deck at the moment. He is very fast, and with the by, with the Gigan buff, I was gonna say Bailante buff, but with the Gigan buff, he can like just he shoots through the water, he shoots through the map, uh, and he does a lot of damage in one hit. But after that, his utility is kind of over. He's cheap, he's four cost, and he's powerful. Uh, he's the flex pick. You could really experiment with his slot. I think uh, with uh, see what other units work for you. Uh, Caesar's working for me, but I feel that uh, the more I've been playing the deck, the less I'm relying on King Caesar to actually do anything except for take down Evos, and I think maybe I could slot in a unit there that might uh, give me more utility. If you wanted to go one energy up, I would recommend the Super X. It would give you a lot more aerial coverage that you could be lacking, uh, and is also can snipe at Evos, but I can't guarantee you that it'll kill them the same way that Caesar would, but... That is my G21 deck. I'm having a lot of success with it. I'm still kind of tweaking it and experimenting with it, but this is what's getting me a lot of wins right now. So if you want to use G21, if you have them at a high level, this is the deck for you. Mine's level 10, so he's way more viable than some others. If you're a newer player, you have him like level 2, level 3. I don't know if this will work. He G21 is obviously one of the best things in this deck because he's the infinite damage but he doesn't have a lot of health so you're gonna want to protect him you could even actually now that i'm thinking about it slot in instead of king caesar and gears because now with Angiris's 500 health buff on each level he actually is a good off tank and him with g21 and uh, g89 is actually very formidable bailante also can soak up some damage but she's not really there for dan for to soak up the damage she's more to give the damage but there's lots of ways you could experiment with this deck. The main thing, the main three in this deck is Gigan, G89, and G21. The two of them coming up to an enemy leader, or even to you, at mock speeds is something that's very difficult. And when you see these two units on the field, normally you're like, oh, I gotta deal with these before they get to my leader, otherwise I'm gonna be in big trouble. But when you see both of them at the same time, you're like, oh my gosh, like this needs to be stopped. Another counter that I could see being a big problem, and it wasn't really used on me too much, but now that I'm thinking about it, I could foresee it happening, is uh, AoEs, because you're going to want to keep G21 and G89, or like all of them close together, Batcher for the buff, they're all going to be close together, Hedera, Ghidorah, and other Biolante, these could be very good counters as well to this deck, so just be careful, and I'm not trying to say this is the perfect deck for G21, this is just the... Uh, best deck that I've made for G21. I think it's one of the better G21 decks that I've seen. I think it really utilizes him 
and his damage if you're using it properly, as well as providing him a lot of support to get him to the other end, because the main thing, obviously, is getting to the other end, so G89 and Bailante to help him get there, Boucher to buff your team, Manila and Sané to stop people from getting to him, and Caesar just for quick high damage, but like I said, Super X is probably a viable replacement, or Anguirus as well, and he's pretty good off tank, so with that being said, thank you all so much for watching, I hope you guys tried this deck, and if you do, let me know what you think, I'll catch you on the next one, Bye bye